we need to understand that you know we have a different kind of waste you know the kind of waste we are generating if you see the composition like most of it is organic in nature biodegradable organics which means it could be food based or greens or yard waste something like that right now as a common man we all understand that anything our food waste has 70 to 80% of it is water right uh, the feed stock the kind of feed stock you are giving to your waste to energy plant it should have a certain calorific value which means the heating value it will drastically uh, reduce because you are feeding more organic waste into your waste to energy plant the other thing is uh, it will also create create a lot of emissions now can we imagine that in a city like delhi where the air quality is already compromised we can have so many waste to energy plants or we can just uh, try to segregate our waste at the source itself and then channelize it to various recycling facility instead of just putting all of that in a waste to energy plant and just you know uh, make our air quality even worse like you need a certain kind of waste to run a waste to energy plant it has to be high calorific waste so according to giz the kind of uh, calorific waste that a waste to energy plant needs is 1800 kilocals per kg but indian waste is low in calorific value is high in moisture content and is less than 1500 kilocals per kg so how is this technology going to work in india solid waste management rules 2016 clearly say the waste that goes there should be non reactive should be non biodegradable it should be non recyclable only these kind of waste can go but at the moment if segregation is not happening how do you send that kind of waste so what is happening is unsegregated waste which has 50 to 60% wet waste which has maybe 15 to 20% of dry recyclables and 10 to 15% of inert waste this is what is going to a waste to energy plant how will it function so all we are doing is that we are using a lot of the government's money in using a technology which really doesn't work in the indian context it doesn't really produce much electricity the way electricity produced is negligible it doesn't take care of any of our electricity needs in the city Uh, these are basically incinerators which the west and the developing country has been using uh, and because even their countries are now phasing out these incinerators these technologies are not finding a market there and they are trying to make markets in india and china so the waste uh, the whole waste to energy plant basically these are very very expensive plants they need uh, a lot of uh, uh, monitoring they need environment norms to be met ideally for a waste to energy plant the bot- bottom ash shouldn't be beyond 20% but most of these plants have 40% and over bottom ash the residual ash that is left after burning whose disposal is again a huge huge challenge i mean uh, perhaps in some corner of the city there is already a mountain of bottom ash that is uh, already there and is creating a huge havoc because it is hazardous in nature pollution coming from waste to energy plants uh due to the poor quality of waste that is being fed to these plants uh which which is causing a great havoc to societies and residential areas we know about the huge impact of okla plant in in subdev bihar colony where and even doctors have advised uh, residents to shift if if it's viable for them to shift uh but but of course there's a lack of you know appropriate health studies or reports and i think uh that level of uh, research really needs to happen now on the ground to really establish the impact but clearly we know that they they do cause pollution uh because of the compromised quality of waste that is being fed to these plants uh so clearly i mean wt in many ways is not the way to go uh, of course they are required for big cities but why can't we have hubs or regional integrated processing sites with waste to energy plants over every city demanding its waste to energy plant you know that i feel is a huge huge flaw